All right, we're going to welcome in now Haley Adams. Uh, another tremendous season so far, guaranteeing herself a spot in the final five, heading to Aromas in just a second. Uh, Haley, thanks for joining me today. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, how's it going? Um, I know we're, we're getting close to the, to, to the ranch here in a little bit. So how, how have things been? Yeah, it's been really good. I can't complain. It was definitely a fast turnaround and it was something I've never personally done before, but I was really happy with how things have went and how things are going. And I think I'll still be in great shape there when it comes. So let's touch on, uh, let's touch on stage one a little bit, a little bit different format that we're, than we've seen in the past. Um, you know, uh, you don't get to compete alongside anyone, really. You don't really know where everyone is at. What was that experience from a big picture standpoint like for you? So I'm someone that loves just to compete in person. I thrive off of that environment. So I was really nervous about it going in because I don't typically do that well in the open if you look at my placements. So I wasn't sure if it was just kind of going to be like that or what to expect. So it was definitely hard not having someone beside you because that's what I'm used to every day. But knowing that I truly did give my best was, I couldn't be upset about that. And so we've spoken with a few athletes before and they said that they felt that maybe the format forced them to maybe even push a little bit harder than they're used to because you don't get to see, you know, the athletes standing left or right. Was that a similar situation for you? Do you feel like you maybe found another gear in some of these workouts? No, I, I mean, I kind of felt the same. I mean, I tried to imagine someone right beside me and it helped having the people that I train with every day there with me, like, because they know me so well. So they were screaming at me to pick up the bar and just like usual. So, I mean, I don't think it was that, that much different or I didn't push even harder. I gave out at best. And so you mentioned, you know, having a bunch of people to train with you, obviously you're a part of the, the kind of infamous CrossFit mayhem kind of training group. Um, how do you think, how do you feel like the the day-to-day -day processes of a training with that crew prepared you for stage one? Jeez, I always feel like I'm not fit because they just like, whip my butt every day. And I just, I love training with them and they push me to be my best every day. And it's a good mental environment too. It's not like super stressful. I mean, it is competitive, but in a good way. So just having them to push me every day. I mean, it's not a shock when I get to competition because I do that with them all the time. So it's been a huge help. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe looking at the programming for stage one, when it came out, you know, obviously we have a handful of uh, benchmark workouts and then a handful of very sing like single modality tests. Was there anything that when you, at first glance, you were like, oh, I'm really excited to try that. Or maybe I'm a little bit worried about that. Well, when the, when the workouts first came out, I was not going to lie, I was a little bit nervous because they were all, like day one, they were all so short. Even the 1K I was worried about because that's not necessarily my best time frame. Mm -hmm. um, it was around that three to four minutes. Um, but I knew I just had to give it my best shot. But I was super excited for the deadlift to handstand push-up workout because I, I mean, that's like a games type workout. They all were. But that one was just, I was excited for that one. And, and, and I guess I was a little worried for the front spot. <laughs> and and that and that's fair. And uh, obviously, I I know in talking with some of the crew, that's something you guys work on and are working on the overall strength. And um, once you were done with them, is there any um, workout in particular that maybe stood out to you that you were proud of the effort, or maybe it went better than you had planned? I think I was seriously just proud of my effort all weekend because I surprised myself in every workout with how I placed and just how I hold it together. But I, I would probably say the last workout, just with some heavier cleans, I was happy to hold up in that because I know that like going into that event, I think people were expecting me to kind of like get knocked out of the top five because it was a heavier clean. So I was excited um, when I did well on that one and kind of proved it for them. <laughs> and and uh, what, is that, what is that like? I mean, you know, I'll, I'll be the first to admit that when I saw the, the, the results from the front squat, I, I thought that might be enough to keep you out. And, you know, you hear sometimes people that, hey, I, I think she might not make it. Is that something you thrive off of? Some athletes are able to kind of use that as bulletin board material to maybe yeah. push themselves a little bit further. Is that how you operate? Yeah, I, honestly, I don't like a lot of attention. I don't like, oh, she's going to go win it, get top five. So it doesn't really bother me either way. I've always kind of been like that. I just, I know what I can do, and that's all that really matters to me and so are the people around me. And, and so you mentioned earlier, uh, 
that you kind of thrive in that in that live competition environment. Where, where does that where does that come from? I mean, yeah, you, you know, we, we see some athletes that do very well at a young age to, in that competitive environment. But you're on the on the biggest stages at at the games, at sanctionals, alongside the best athletes in the world, and you seem to thrive in that environment. So, how are you able to kind of cultivate that? I've competed in sports my whole life. I've always been so competitive to everything I've done. I hate losing. That literally is what motivates me every day or like doing bad, you know, like I was like perform to my best. So I think this just grown up. I've always been like that. And I don't know where it came from, I guess sports, but even just like running the 500 meter or 50 meter dash in elementary school, I wanted to win. <laughs> so I guess I've just kind of been born with it. Is, do you have like family members that you like to compete with? Or like, I'll, I'll use for example, like my dad is extremely competitive. My brother is extremely competitive. So I've kind of cultivated that. Is there someone like that for you? Um, I wouldn't say so. It's always just kind of come from within. Mm -hmm. Right on. And so, you know, you, you qualify for regionals. We're going to take a step back here. Qualify for regionals, um, you know, in the teenage divisions um, while you're still uh, competing in that at that level and then you know you win you win the final year at, in the teenage divisions and you move up you have a big decision to make where you're going to go to school where you're going to train where you, what was it about the mayhem environment in particular in cookville that that was attractive to you to try and make the next step yeah well after they announced all those changes i was like there's no way i'm good enough to make it so when i was given the opportunity to be on the second mayhem team I was like, that's a perfect opportunity. I'll use this year and just kind of adjust to the new format, use it to get better. And then hopefully the next year I'll be good enough to make it to the games. Well, that ended up not happening because I qualified for the open. So then just ended up going individual, but yeah. Well, and, and kind of touching on what you said there, you said, you know, early on, you thought there's no way, you know, you're good enough to make it. Not only did you make it, but you, you make the top 10 at the CrossFit Games, you're the rookie of the year. And I believe you're the youngest athlete ever to finish inside the top 10 at the games. And so hearing all of that, how does that, how does that reframe how you view yourself and, and your belief in yourself over the past year? I think just kind of believing myself is something I always need to work on. I always know I'm good enough within. I just don't like saying it out loud. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm always like, Oh, well, I, you know, you know what I mean? But yeah, I just, it's a good confidence booster. Yeah, it, it, is it, it's kind of easy to, it, it's not that you're not confident in yourself, but it's easy to kind of just write it off and that be yeah. the way you cope with it. So I'm curious. Yeah, if, especially after last year, everyone's like, oh, it's the running games. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, well, and, and so is there anything in particular that you're working on to try and help with that? Like, are, you know, whether it's, you know, mindset practice, whether it's journaling, whether it's words of affirmation, is there anything in yeah. particular that you're focused on? I mean, on? honestly, it doesn't affect my performance when I compete because I just kind of switch off into a different um, atmosphere, but I should probably work on like sometimes like saying, oh, I don't suck <laughs> or if I do bad. I'm like, you don't suck, Haley, don't you say that. <laughs> it never affects my performance, which is good. Like I'm totally different out there, but it should probably be a little nice for myself sometimes. <laughs> Can, can you can you feel that switch get flipped though when you go in? Is there like a moment where you're like, okay, I'm in game mode, and is there anything that you do to try and maybe kind of enter into that mode as you start preparing? Yeah, I'm pretty good about just getting that adrenaline rush, and I like to listen to the music thumping. That kind of calms me, and it's all I think about. I don't really have any other thoughts. Everyone always asks what you think, but I'm like, I don't think about anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so enjoy the adrenaline. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, what what music are you listen to right now to get you pumped up? What's your go to? go-to music any kind of like thumping rap okay it has like a good bass you know mm -hmm. you, you gotta, like... gotta match the heartbeat a little bit yeah, get you pumped exactly. up for <laughs> sure um and so, so i'm kind of curious you mentioned that you know obviously things have changed a little bit in the last in the last year because you were top 10 at the games um I, i'm kind of curious from outside of the competition standpoint how has life changed for you as an athlete any surprises whether it's dealing with sponsors or anything like that or maybe just the general lifestyle of now being an elite individual athlete and being in that upper echelon right i mean after last year i kind of blew up kind of fast in the crossfit world so just dealing with all these new followers and you know just social media attention was a little bit of an adjustment because I don't really like a lot of attention so just trying to figure out like how to manage that and um, I had new sponsorships which is also really cool and then I was in school um, 
Yeah, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> is, is there anything that stands out maybe that where you're like, man, that was really cool. Or like, you know, sometimes there's the elements of being that pro athlete that are kind of like pinch me moments. Like that was really awesome that I get to do this now. Is there anything like that that stands out? Um, I would say like running into the Coliseum last year, I wish I really would have taken it in because that was such a cool moment. And I I'll honestly will always remember like those moments and being top 10 there. And, and so kind of looking at some of the the elements of training at CrossFit Mayhem. Um, is there anything in particular that, you know, that really resonates with you that like Rich and the crew have kind of taught you about competing at that upper level or being as far as approaching competition and training and things like that? Honestly, they've taught me so much, but I don't even know what. <laughs> I just hear what I'm told, you know? Yeah. And somehow I've transformed into the athlete that I am because I'm here. But like I said, I just do what they tell me and it's worked pretty well, but they're just, honestly, I couldn't pick out, pick out better people for my mental and physical like abilities. Mm -hmm. And what does that mean to you to have those types of people in your corner? Oh, they're, they're the best. I could never honestly thank them enough, but I think once like you find your people and the people that will support you, no matter what, you just know that it's just a, like a stress relief, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and so now we're, you're going into what might be a, a big stressor in the CrossFit games of the stage two and coming out to Aromas is, um, first off, what, what is, and so I don't think a lot of people at home know this, but what is the process that you guys have athletes have to do just to get to the ranch and, and, and compete? Yeah, so we already had to send in a spit COVID test, which was negative. <laughs> um, but then we have to get there on Sunday, I believe. And then we have a COVID test on Monday. We can't leave the hotel. Um, actually, I don't think we can leave our hotel room for 24 hours until we have our COVID results. And then we can finally check in on Wednesday. But those 48 hours are kind of probably going to be kind of boring because you're just stuck in your hotel room and watching all the TikTok. <laughs> I was going to say, what, what, how are you going to pass the time? Yeah. It's going to be TikTok? TikTok. Uh -huh. Yeah. Are we are we gonna have to like look for like a Haley Adams TikTok series from like quarantine bubble? Or? Maybe I'll just like start making dances all day and just post it <laughs> and embarrass myself. Hey, you know it's a good way to pass the time as long as as long as you come yeah. back negative and you get to compete. Maybe lighten right. the load of the stress a little bit. Yeah. Um, is there anything in particular that you're excited to maybe tackle or experience at this new situation here, competing at the ranch and in, in California? Well, obviously, this is just kind of hopefully a once in a lifetime opportunity <laughs> of it just being in five. So I'm just going to try to enjoy all of it. And I mean, being at the ranch is already super cool, but I'm excited just to be with those five girls and just throw down out there. And yeah, I think it's just going to be some really good memories and moments to happen. That's awesome. And uh, it's funny because I, I was talking with some of the, with Rory and and rich a little bit after stage one and rich mentioned that he's really excited to see uh you compete because we haven't even seen gotten to see what Haley's best at yet yeah. um which is a scary thought given how well you performed in stage one so with that in mind what is it that you're best at that you know maybe might be the the, the types of things to look out for for Haley Adams yeah I definitely love some running um I'm also pretty good at like just odd object stuff. And I love gymnastics. So basically everything that didn't show up. <laughs> <laughs> it's <safe fun. laughs> right yeah. on. And, and so maybe, maybe kind of looking outward a little bit, what is it about you? I, I, you know, this is always a, an interesting question, but what is it about the other four women in the field that maybe inspires or motivates you or makes you excited to be able to compete with them? Right. I think all five of us are different in our own way and we all have our own personalities and strengths and weaknesses, but I think all of us just coming together and competing, I think it's just going to be something super epic and I'm excited to compete with them. And, and obviously you have a long career ahead of you. Um, and you know, you're still going to school and everything like that. What needs to happen? Do you think at the ranch in a couple, in a, a week, really, um, for you to consider this season a success after everything that's happened and all the craziness that's kind of transpired in 2020. Right. I mean, I can honestly say, I mean, I can't be disappointed in myself. I've already 
doing better than last year, which I wasn't sure if that was going to happen or not. Um, so yeah, I mean, obviously I want to get on that podium, but I don't think I should walk away with my head down if I don't, because I mean, I've already proved I'm the top five in the world. And, but I mean, yeah, I have my own little goals, but also I should be proud of my efforts no matter what. And just going to keep trying to tell myself that. <laughs> And so before we go a little bit, let's learn a little bit about Haley Adams, the person. Um, for people who may not be familiar, what were some of the sports and things that you did growing up that maybe kind of shaped your athletic background that you have now? So I've played basically every sport. I started with soccer, softball, gymnastics, cross country, swimming. I think I got all of them. Ooh. Yeah. So all the good sports that you need are for endurance and body awareness just didn't have much brute strength <laughs> up there but yeah I think that all those sports definitely made me into the athlete I am or why I adapted so fast and and so now you're you're studying you're going to school at, at tech right Tennessee Tech yeah. um uh, what what are you studying is there anything in particular that you're you're focused on with that yeah right now I'm getting my pre-dental hygiene credits mm -hmm. um I'm in no rush I'm not full-time by no means like literally half but I just kind of like it it's like a sad thing kind of keeps me you know like a kid I feel like I'd still have to have that part of my life without it interrupting anything mm -hmm. but yeah I'm just enjoying it taking it slow and hopefully one day I'll be a dental hygienist <laughs> well there you go it's, it's always nice to have additional things as well yeah. and you, you, you touched on something right there I think that's interesting you said you still want to have that element of you know being 19 years old and being a college student and being a kid how, how are you able to manage that I mean I feel like there's a lot of pressure to be you know, this pro athlete at the top, you know, you're competing with grown women at, you know, thirties, late twenties. How do you maintain that sense of self um, in being 19 and getting to enjoy life in a more whimsical way? I mean, by no means do I get to just run out and be a normal kid, but I feel like me being in school, even if it's just a small amount helps keep me somewhat like level because I think for me, for longevity in the sport, I don't want to burn out, you know? So like just having that, to take my mind off of CrossFit for just a few hours a day is really big for me. And also like I have goals outside of CrossFit. Like I said, I want to be a dental hygienist one day. And I, I mean, it's going to take me a lot longer than some people, but it makes me happy knowing I'm working towards something else too, without it being a stressor in my life. Mm -hmm. And, and as far as things outside of, what are other, some other things that make you happy, whether it's TikTok, you know, certain types of music, hobbies, activities. Uh, I love TikTok. Uh, that's my big thing right now. Um, yeah, let's see. Just like rap and then watching YouTube. Yep. Stupid stuff. Hey, hey, it's you know, it's good entertainment as well. Yeah. Um, is is there a go to cheat meal or like indulge this thing that you're like after the games, I'm definitely gonna get me some of that? I'm so excited. It's been such a long year. I literally qualified for the games a year ago. So haven't had like too many cheat meals, so I'm just ready to eat anything. I don't care what it is. <laughs> <laughs> McDonald's, whatever. Oh man. So it's just whatever it comes yeah, first. Whatever I can get my hands on. Oh man. You're going to get some in and out while you're in California. I yeah, know there's... I had that in 2016. Yep. So good. A little, little, little fun fact for you. Uh, I believe where you guys are staying in Morgan Hill, there's an in and out right there. So. Okay. I'm walking across the street then. Sorry. They're going to have to put back. <laughs> you got it. You got it. <laughs> well, well, Haley, thank you so much for taking the time to chat for a, yeah. a little bit today. Um, when are we going to see you out in California? You taking off soon? Um, I'm leaving Saturday morning, so I'll be there Saturday afternoon. Awesome. Well, best of luck. We look forward to watching you compete and uh, maybe get to see you break the American podium streak at the games and get some Ooh. hardware. Hopefully. <laughs>